YouTube, what's up, man? It's gameplay time. I'm back. Got one of these for you. This is actually salary cap. It's on the salary cap leaderboards, grinding to get your spot in the club series. If you're not doing that, make sure you pick your club. Make sure you get on the salary cap grind. It's what I want to start doing from here on out. Make sure I'm ranked number one in the Philadelphia Eagles club series. Also, man, if you'd like to play for money, the link below, you can check out Players Lounge. I'm going to be doing a lot of tournaments with them, a lot of sponsored events. So if you like, you think your game is up there, you want to play for some money, hit that link below for Players Lounge. And if you see any offense, defense, special teams that you like in this game, the link to Madden Turf is below. So you can click that and find out my offensive ebook when the New Orleans Saints playbook and a defensive ebook in the Detroit Lions is available there. Here I'm playing Merck the Great. This is, a, like I said, a salary cap. I have a super offense this game. I have Randy Moss, T.Y. Hill, and Tyreek Hill, Michael Vick. I actually have Gurley, and I have Ricky Williams. So I have probably, out of the 800 cap, price 650 on offense. Start with a little draw, probably because of the play clock and setting up your audibles. Takes a little bit of time. So I'm able to do that. Here we go, hit Gurley in the flat. You guys see it all the time. Gurley is my tight end. That way I can hit flat routes. Hit the little zigs, and he can get big yards. And then, uh, Speaking of big yards, we go ahead and hit Randy Moss across the middle there because he's playing the flats a little bit more. Once again, hit the over the middle because he's playing Tyree. He got to guard Todd Gurley on that drag. Leaves the middle of the field wide open. Gets a huge swat there, but Shaquem Griffin in a, in a flat zone. Try to go raw, draw here with Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams probably 35 cap at running back just because he fought a little bit, but didn't fight me in the end zone there. It's the first drive of the game. I feel like in the first half of games, just getting as many points as possible is the best route to go because in the second half, you're not going to be able to make those points up. You're not going to be able to get those points back. So just give yourself the best position to have a lot of points when it comes to the second half. Here he goes. He's in a split close. If you watch my streams, which you can below at Twitch, the link is there. I destroy split close. It will not prosper on my field. But he's running the ball. Ran the ball three straight, three straight plays. Here he goes with a pass. There's just absolutely nothing. Tries to go deep. Adrian Amos. I mean, we need an interception there, and that would have changed the game. But we don't get the pick. Get him to second and ten. Throws this little flat route underneath. We can make a tackle. Troy Apke, salary cap user. The only user you should have. Run. There we go. We just absolutely bag him. Hard flash. We guard the corner route. Get him to a fourth and six. He goes for this. Nice play. He really flooded out the zones. Put flat routes on both sides and a little baby curl there. He was able to pick up that fourth and six. That was a good play. And here we go. Runs the ball. <laughs> kind of bounces. There was a bunch of people clogging it up, but he bounced to the inside and found a lane with Tevin Coleman. I don't have a lot of cap on defense, so I maybe I have an 88 speed player, but I know Tevin Coleman's 88 speed. Definitely looked like my team was slow right there. No one was able to catch him. So we give up a touchdown run. Here we go, Ty Gurley. This is why. And then after you make him play the middle of the field, you can go back to your drags and your flats to Mr. Gurley. Here we go, Ricky Williams. Got to keep him honest. A little bit of draw, a little bit of. I mean, you're going to see a lot of Mr. Gurley. There he goes, fights those extra two yards. Gives me the first down. That's why I love putting such a dynamic player in the tight end spot. Here we go. He pressed a little bit and. This offense is dangerous. When you have T.Y. Hilton out wide, Tyreek Hill out wide, and Randy Moss in the slot, a lot of speed, a lot of ability to beat the defense. There we go. We're able to go up top to T.Y. Hilton. We get a three-point lead. Big drive here. We got to hold him. We got to keep this lead at halftime because he does get the ball. So hopefully we can go into the half with a lead. Here he goes. Once again, he runs three verticals. Nobody's, nobody's open for him. I don't know his... Just got to stop the run. And here he comes out in quick snaps. A run on third and 21. Ah, bad tackling. My players are slow. They're not that great. But I got to do a better job with my user tackling. Allow him to hit the same spin move twice. And we see again Tevin Coleman way faster than anybody else. I wasn't ready for that, that quick snap of the, of the power right there. Honestly, that was the biggest thing that caught me. I can stop that run fairly easily. But he quick snapped it. I was, un I mean, not a bad call. Third and 21. He probably was going to get it anyway. Here we go, Shazier sack. I mean, we get to a third and 14. Moss dropping it. Ugh, this is killer right now. Inside three minutes, I go for it. Hold the blocks, able to hit Ty Gurley down the seam. Once again, that's why I love him. I mean, he's obviously going to make plays after, the, plays after the catch, but he still has the height to be able to hit the seam passes, high ball, stuff like that, as opposed to having a Barry Sanders or somebody shorter there. 
That's why right now, pretty much Todd Gurley is my ideal uh, option to put a tight end. You see, if they're going, you have to take these routes. If you're going to be an effective offensive player, if the flat is there, you definitely have to take it. Here I try to hit a, a seam ball there to Randy Moss. Vic overdo the high ball, but Vic does that from time to time. Go to the baby curl, baby hitch there to Randy Moss. We're getting close. Curl route. That's just a bad animation right there. I mean, I could have caught that and fell down, but he comes forward to catch it for such for such a little gain. If you would have caught it right where he ran the curl, it would have been a first down and I would have had a chance. But it goes back to my, my notion of always putting as many points on the board as you can in the first half because, you, you know, you're going to want these possessions back in the second half if you waste them. Now, obviously, I'm down one to start the second half, and he gets the ball, but I feel like if I just stop these runs, every time he's dropped back to pass, there hasn't been a soul open. So I have to focus on stopping the run. I have to stay disciplined. I mean, a lot of times when you're playing a runner, you mean you can't be surprised by them running the ball, even though for you it might be an obvious passing situation. When you're playing a runner or somebody that's killing you on the run, you have to make sure that you know this is they're going to run the ball, even if it's third and five, third and four. There's a possibility to run the ball, so you have to stay disciplined. Here he goes, try to hit, hit one deep. He had to lead it to the outside, let it out of bounds. Here we go. I kept Brian Dawkins there, who's my free safety in the yellow zone rather than a flat, and allowed him to hit the drag there for a nice little play. Here he goes, going with a lot of slants and drags over the middle of my field, but that's cool because that's what I want here at Playmaker. Another thing, if you watch the switch streams, I hate the Playmaker because he, he just drew up a terrible play and got away with just Playmaker and somebody in the middle. So right now he's baby dot me. He's not really running the ball. He's just a lot of baby dots. We can't get that pick. How many times do you guys throw a pass like that and they catch that pick? Crazy. Doesn't happen for me. Once again, there's nothing out here. Throwing the ball off his back foot. He, he's... The, now he's running two verticals and a little drag to playmaker is, is crazy. That's why I'm starting to man up that left wide receiver so the playmaker can't hurt me. And this is this is a neat little play. He runs a, a flat route and a comeback. I don't know why my cloud flat over there who is, I guess it was Milton. I guess it wasn't that good of a player. Maybe that's why. He gets that fourth down on a quick little baby throw. A lot of baby throws. He goes back to the run. We bottle it up there. I have... Uh, Vita Vai, I know we talked about that guy on a, on the YouTube before, but I had the 19 cap one. He's not really fighting for me the way I want him to. Here he goes again, two curls. I don't see a soul open waiting for the playmaker, and he actually gets sacked. Terrible sack by him. By more, I put him in a spy, so he's fast enough to go get go get the quarterback with his 87 speed. Gets him to a fourth and 21. And here we just play the sticks, and we get Melvin Ingram rushing around the edge. That wasn't an aggressive. He just, Melvin Ingram just showed out right there. So now, looking at this game, I think this should be the last drive of the game. I call some bad plays here. Just an easily defended play right there with a drag in the one post. Nowhere for him to really, his user to really go. I had nowhere to really throw the ball. Hated that play call. Another one right here, a drag in a post. He's just hard flashing card as a post. Another bad play call. Gets me to a third and six right here, and I'm going to get absolutely screamed at. My drag got bumped up. I couldn't dump the ball off. Terrible possession by me after getting that stop. So now we got to stop him again. That's what we do. I mean, it, turn the ball over. I had a chance to end the whole game and milk it out and kick a field goal, but now I got to stop him again. Here goes third and six. He has all day. We send the spy. People are on, and somehow he gets away with this throw. I don't know what happened to my flat zones. Tons of zones over there, and he still gets it. So now it's first down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run commit. Cause obvious run commit situation. But I'm going to guard the outside left receiver because that's the obvious passing on a run commit. Lobs it up to the outside left receiver, and we get over there with Moore to pick it off. So you see Moore over there was able to get the quarterback with the 87 speed and also fast enough to run over there. Got the height and the jump to make that play. So we get the ball back. Now we got no more posts and drags. We're going to go back to our flat route or my curl. Make him, he's sending a lot of pressure right there. That could have been a huge play if it wasn't swatted down. Here we go. The flat route, the out route. We're going to we're gonna pepper this side if he continues to blitz me and just play hard flats. You know, Ricky fighting a little bit. It's okay. I have all the time in the world. Time is not a factor for me. It's more of a factor for him. Here we go. Flat route of curve. We're going to hit Gurley over here. If they're going to blitz, you have to make them play the sideline. Once again, you got to make him take it, take it, take it, take it. And he's going to eventually, eventually get greedy and run hard flats. He does it right here, and we're able to hit T.Y. Hilton, and that's going to end the game. In field goal range, the field goal wins the game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and field goal in the first play. 
because that way if he calls timeout, I can get rid of the ice by calling spikes or calling runs. But if I run a play, then he's going to be able to ice me. So if you come out with field goal on first down, then he might use his timeout. And then you come out and you spike the ball, come out and field goal again, and repeat it and repeat it until he's out of timeouts. That's how you get rid of ice. So in this situation, you should never be iced. So that's why I come out on first down and go ahead and kick the field goal here. Obviously, it's going to cause him to have a little bit of time left, but to me, it's worth it because I won't be iced. It'll be an easier field goal. And I see I did not get a perfect kick, so I hold it not to three. I hold it to four because a lot of times people expect you to hold it to three and they can time it up a little bit better and maybe block it. So I hold it to four there. Squib kick so nothing crazy happens. He falls down. Two seconds, he's got one play, so everybody's in the deep blue right here. Running back after it. Obviously, these plays don't work too well. <laughs> N nothing really you can do there, and, and Jalen Ramsey comes up with a pick. And for good measure, we're going to try to return it because point differential matters on the leaderboards, but no, Ramsey gets wrapped up. That's how you end the game. I mean, a huge play on that run commit is really what won me that game. A terrible play by him, really, to, to throw that ball up to him and not have an idea of where he was going to go if, he, if, I, if I ran commit. But, I mean, I felt good. Obviously, this is just a huge example of being able to just take your flat route or take your take, make them pay for running hard flats. You know, that's what it does. And that's what throwing the drags and throwing the flat routes will do. It will make them get greedy and aggressive and, and play down on their coverage. You can hit a bigger play. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please hit the sub and bring more for y'all.